Okay, crew, welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. And yes, it is time to revisit electric trailer brakes. Now, we installed some electric trailer brakes to the Andy Mechanic Adventure Trailer. And yes, that's what's on the Redger label. Pretty cool, eh? Um, but during that video, we just showed how to wire them up. Uh, didn't really get too involved with fitting things like brake shoes and springs and the, the electromagnet and how it all works and the handbrake system and that kind of stuff. It was all a bit, you know, nothing too much on the inside of the drum. Everything was on the outside of the drum, right, other than the wheel bearings that we fitted. So, since this job's come along, I thought, well, maybe this would be really useful to a few of you around the world because electric trailer brakes are a little bit odd if you don't understand how they work then you know it just gets a bit confusing so i'm going to give you my take on it now obviously there's going to be a lot more you know i'm not professional when it comes to electric trailer brakes i'm still learning myself but pretty sure i've figured out the basics now to help with the filming the trailer it's a big ass box trailer okay it's outside it won't fit under the carport. It definitely won't come into the workshop. It's on the drive and it's pretty windy. I can't film outside. Sorry, it's just not gonna happen. But what I have done is I've brought everything that we need to look at inside. How cool is that? That's right, I've made a little bracket to hold the backing plate for the brakes. It's mounted in the vise. I've reassembled the brakes just to get my head around the best way of reassembly because well, I remember doing a Hilux years and years ago, back axle Hilux. And you, some of you go, pfft, they're easy, Andy. Well, it was snowing at the time. It was blowing a gale. I was out in the yard. I wasn't in the workshop. This is back in the UK. And there were springs and clips and all sorts. And it was getting dark. And I, I remember very distinctly on that night, I got a little bit upset. Yes, tools started to get thrown around in the snow. And the following morning, I realized I'd lost one or two. But I did get them back in the spring. Once the snow melted, I found them. But that's not the point. The point is, why make your life hard when you can make it a little bit easier? So I've spent maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes maximum, with some photos that I took of the shoes mounting the backing plate before I took them off. That's absolutely critical. I can't stress just how important it is to make your life so much easier by taking a few photos. They cost nothing nowadays, just on your phone. Take a few pickies before you start pulling stuff apart because there's two reasons for that. One is, shows you how it goes back together pretty much, especially if you get to take good pictures. But secondly, you might see some telltale signs in those photos of stuff that you might have missed when you pulled it apart. And of course, it's really important that when you put things back together again, you've fixed all the faults. If you haven't, it's going to happen again, probably. Uh, one thing I will note at this point in the video, I was very surprised just how loose all the nuts and bolts were. That's the, the wheel nuts holding the wheel on. Didn't feel torque to me. Didn't feel quite tight enough. Wheel didn't fall off and they, they weren't finger tight, but they just didn't feel tight enough. So we're going to torque those up. Um, but also, there's four bolts that hold the backing plate to the axle. Now, I would have never spotted this if I hadn't taken the backing plate off to bring it into the workshop. It's only because of making this video that I actually stumbled across the fact that two out of the four bolts, well, they were pretty damn loose, to be honest. So, obviously, they'll all get talked up when it goes back together. But, enough talking. Let's take a quick look at the backing plate, the shoes, the electromagnet, the arrangement, so to speak. Uh, and then we'll take a quick look at the parts that we've picked up, the prices, and then we're gonna have a go at installing the new parts onto this backing plate. Uh, I won't do both sides on the video, they're the same, so it'll just bore you to death and you fall asleep, um, as I'm doing now. So let's crack on, take a look at this, uh, this brake, and see what's there, and basically how it works. Here we go. Use. Okay, 
Okie dokie, right, hopefully it's a good camera angle for you. Well, you're looking directly down onto the brake backing plate. This is the top, this is the bottom, and this is the electromagnets. This is what basically controls the brakes, or applies the brakes, should I say. Now, first thing I spotted is the brake shoes are getting pretty thin, especially on this, on this shoe here, the friction materials maybe only a couple of mil thick, so that's why we're doing a brake job on this trailer. Uh, or the, the initial reason why we've found lots of other faults whilst we've been in there. One is the electromagnet appears to have been catching on the brake drum. That's really bad. And I'm told they shouldn't be as wobbly as that. So hopefully when we fit the new one, it won't be as wobbly as that. Uh, I also spotted that the wiring for the electromagnet, the sheathing, this protective sheathing that we used, uh, same stuff as we used on the old CB750 K2 actually, we did the wiring harness, um, it's worn through. It's obviously been rubbing on the, on the hub part of the drum where the wheel bearings are, are located. That's also very bad, very bad indeed actually. Uh, what else did we spot? Hmm, there was something else. No, I think that was about it. So magnets, wires, and shoes. Okay, there were the three problems that we spotted other than loose bolts. Now, I've been looking at the backing plates, and I reckon I could probably install this onto the trailer because it's, it's uh, fixed sort of studs that go through with just a nut on the outside, the back of the axle. Probably install this complete. I don't have to pull it all apart. That's a huge win for me, so we can take a bit more time, uh, you know, talking through stuff. Now, let me get the brake drum. Now, I've already taken the wheel bearings out because we're going to fit new wheel bearings, but we'll stick him on there for now. And this is the right-hand side. And I've got a pen. So, the wheel will go, when it's going forwards, will go in that direction. It'll rotate that way as it goes down the road. Bear that in mind. So we'll whip that off, and this is the electromagnet, and when it's energised, it becomes, or it creates a magnetic field, it wants to attract itself to stuff, basically the brake, brake drum, and because the brake drum is rotating in this direction, the magnet gets pulled this way, in that direction there, so we'll stick a little arrow on there gets pulled in that direction. Now, obviously to apply the brakes, the brake shoes have to be pushed outwards to make contact with the brake drum. So, as this gets pushed, just watch this shoe to start off with. It's linked to an arm here, which is pivoted just up there, or just here actually. And as I push that across, can you see, if I do it a bit quicker, you can see that that brake shoe here is being pushed out at the top here, it's going that way. And that's going to make contact with the with the rotating drum. Hence, the brake starts to be applied. Now, what also happens in the design is that the bottom half, this connection between the two shoes, is floating. Can you see it moves around? So as that shoe makes contact, it gets dragged round with the brake drum. So it sort of gets pulled in that direction and this direction. So it sort of starts to rotate just a little bit with the brake drum. And what happens is this side gets pushed across. I should have cleaned all this first, but I wanted it to be authentic. So that now gets pushed in that direction and sort of probably a little bit up as well. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's in a rotational force. So it gets dragged around with the drum. That one's been pushed out by the magnet, boom, like that. And then this one, it, it gets pushed down as it gets dragged with the drum. This one gets pushed across. And this one also makes contact with the drum as well. And obviously, this one's doing more work because, you know, realistically, the, the, the brake shoe is massively worn on the friction material on this shoe as opposed to this one. Although, one thing to bear in mind is the friction material on this shoe basically goes all the way around, whereas on this one, not sure if you can see it on the camera, it finishes here. There is no brake shoe, uh, brake pad, sorry, sorry, friction material for the whole of this length here. So when you come to put, put it together, just check. I mean, from what I can tell, that's the only difference between the two shoes 
is one has a lot a shorter length of friction material so make sure you get them the right way around this is the right hand side and that's the the forward facing brake shoe so the trailer hitch is down down that way okay so that's basically how the whole system works so when the electromagnet is energized it gets dragged around with the drum it pushes that shoe out that shoe gets pulled around with the drum which then in turn transmits that force across to the other shoe which then also gets pushed out as it rotates and it makes contact with the rotating drum so both shoes are in contact with the drum and providing a braking force when you release the brakes this de-energizes it no longer is a magnet and essentially the springs bring everything back to position. Probably another reason why this shoe has worn a bit more is it, it sort of relies on it being you know, pushed away from the, the friction material, so the, uh, the brake drum surface, um, just you know, by the springs, really, or, or I don't know, it, it probably rubs a little bit, actually. There's not, you know, at the moment it's very, very stiff because there's no, uh, compound there's no lubricants we use like a copper paste type substance between the shoe and the backing plate and this one is it's quite rusted and it's extremely stiff to move so what would be happening is that shoe wouldn't be fully retracting and it would be just rubbing on the brake drum which is bad you know really bad anyway hopefully that explains to you how the electric brake system works on here we've got a few more bits and pieces to talk about uh, first of all the magnet has two wires it's just a coil of wire inside and each of these wires is one end of that coil it doesn't matter as far as i understand it doesn't matter which way around these two wires are wired to your vehicle one of them will be wired to the brake light circuit uh, usually via an adjuster some kind of electronic modulator for the brakes and the other one gets wired down to ground that's what we did on the adventure trailer and it works mint really really good even though i hate electric brakes works fantastic now, this trailer, uh, or, or this brake configuration, also allows for a handbrake. So when you park the trailer, unhitch it off your vehicle, it's not going to roll off down the hill. And that's done by this component here. And underneath, there's a little arm that I can pull on, which the cable would normally pull on. And all it does is, again, it moves that shoe out, which, again, as it touches the drum, would then, it can't go any further when it's against the drum, it transmits that force across to the other shoe and that then gets pushed out as well um, this like i say, this this trailer they've not made use of that it doesn't have a handbrake on it it absolutely should yeah, i think trailers without handbrakes are extremely dangerous and it's just a matter of time before it rolls somewhere and probably hurts somebody not a, not a good idea uh, what i have removed is there were two cable ties let me get me scribe oh, this will do a pointy stick um, there was a cable tie holding this wire around here, this little slot they put in the shoe, uh, sorry, in the arm, and again around this slot. So it was sort of like that. And then it sort of took a shortcut, hence why it's been rubbing onto there. So I'm going to maybe try and extend that a little bit, have a bit more cable on the inside of the drum, and I might even drill another hole here just to get a third cable tie in to make damn sure that that wire can't make contact with the drum. Whew. Right, let's go and look at the parts next. In fact, no, let's let's pull this apart. Let's pull it apart, and then we'll go and check out the parts. Okay, so first job, uh, I'm going to pull it apart uh, pretty much in a reverse order to how I'm going to assemble it with the new parts, and I'm hoping the new parts are right. So the first or the last thing that I installed was this adjuster down here. This is to compensate, it's to, uh, to allow you to adjust up the brakes as they were. So we're going to pull that out. There we go. So we've got him out now. And you can, and you can see that that's just a tube. It's got a thread. And basically, as you turn that, it just gets longer, essentially. You can see the clean threads underneath. So it probably hasn't been adjusted for a very long time. Hence why the brakes really didn't work very well when we drove the trailer down. Right, we'll take the spring out next. That's the bottom spring, and the the spring went in from the underside on the front shoe, and it goes on the outside on the rear shoe. It's, it's sort of like an S shape. 
Okay, next job is going to be to remove these retaining pins. Now, sometimes they can be really, really hard to remove. These ones aren't too bad. So, I'm going to try, normally I use mole grips, but these are actually quite fragile and you can damage them. Uh, I've already, I already distorted one a bit earlier on and then gave up with that idea. So I'm just going to push down with some, there we go, and I can rotate the pin 90 degrees, release the pressure, and we now have one spring out with the pin. And we'll do the same on this side. If I can get to it, oh, I can't even get to it, hang on, bear with me. I did juggle it around the, the vice a little bit. Yes, I can just get to that. Okay, so we'll just turn the pin. There we go. Right, one pin and another spring. You can get special tools to do these. This one's got little notches in it, so maybe it keys into that to help you rotate it. I don't know. I've never had one. Don't need it. Um, okay, so things are starting to get a bit more floppy. We can remove the handbrake mechanism. Now, there is a spring down the back. I'll show you that properly when we come to the, the, do the reassembly. And I'm just going to flick that spring off. There we go. And now we can pull this bit out. It all gets a bit messy. This is what I don't like about brake about shoots. It all gets very awkward and fighty and messy. That will come out of there at some point, he says. In fact, maybe we took the spring off next. I think we did. So we'll pull that spring out. There we go. The main spring is now off and that'll give us some more movement. There we are. Right. So that's the handbrake mechanism and that's the arm that sticks out externally off the back of the backing plate. And the two shoes, they locate this shoe locates in that groove there, and this shoe locates in that groove there, and they work against that surface and that surface, if that makes sense, I think it is, no, sorry, that surface and that surface as they push the shoes apart, easy, right, we'll stick that down there, okay, now this shoe should come out now, there we go, right hand shoe is off and the left hand shoe we've just got this spring to get out of there which you've got to sort of twist it around a bit it's a bit awkward but they do it so that they can't, there's less chance of them falling out you see so the spring has to line up with the angle of the slot to be removed like that okay that's the left shoe out and all we're left with now is the arm for the electromagnet you can see now how that works you can see all these contact points around the backing plate, which are completely rusted up. Uh, the shoes themselves, wherever there's a little, a little sort of zigzaggy bit, a little lump, that's where they make contact. It gives it a bit more surface area. There should be some kind of paste around here, here, and here, and uh, maybe even on there actually to help with that arm moving around. Yes, definitely on there. There isn't anything. Nothing. Nobody's made any attempt to put any kind of lubricant on those points. And it shows the brakes were not very good. Now, this arm can now be removed. The only downside is uh, we've got the electromagnet still connected. So I don't know how these come apart. Um, I've got to be very careful how we do it. I think I need a little flat screwdriver, maybe. I imagine there's a little clip here we've got to take out. Now, but this one's scrap, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I've also seen another point of contact as well that I'll show you once this is out. But I think, oh, there we go. Look, is that going to come out of there? I'm not sure if a new one of these comes in the kit. There we go. Right, little tiny spring clip we'll put it on the back of the vise so we don't lose that okay that now allow oh, that was, man that was pretty <laughs> not a lot to it and of course there's a spring just at the back very very weak spring indeed actually on there so the electromagnet is now loose I might try and energize that and see if it still works um we've also got another point of contact that again should really have some kind of grease on it some kind of copper paste uh, you can see where this arm runs across, 
and there is a, a, a piece that comes down that makes contact with the backing drum and again it's just metal on metal and there's rust everywhere it's just not the way you do it not impressed now to remove this arm all we do is lift it up and that then comes out of the way and again we've got a pivot point here sometimes there's a little spring washer behind there no nothing so we'll give that a bit of a wire brush and we'll, we'll copy paste that up when we come to reassemble so i'll stick that over on this side so everything's respective relative uh, and the last thing to do on here is to remove these wires so let me just move it across a bit hopefully it won't go, out, go off camera and we've got a little clip here which will probably thread the wires through then let's have a look Maybe we can move it up a bit you can see the but you can see the rear side yeah, there we go, look. Okay. Let's open the lights a bit. Right, said so Fred. So that's the spring for the handbrake. And it goes... Hang on a minute. It goes like that. And it hooks onto that arm that sticks through. So we'll just remove that, if we can. It hasn't fallen out yet, so it's a bit it's a little bit reluctant. There we go. So it goes in like that and then rotates round so it ends up like that. So you could probably put it in like that. Now let's put another go. Yeah, you can put it in like that, give it a bit of a bit of a push down, and then it will do that. Perfect. You may not see that very well on the next on the next video. Or on the on the reassembly. Okay, I think we can just pull those wires through that clip rather than wrist breaking the clip. That's one. And this is just the brackets that I made to hold it in the vise. That's not part of the trailer at all. Okay, that's those out of there. Now spin it round so it's in the correct orientation. Mr. Young. There we go. Can we pull those through there? Or is it a tight fit? It's a pretty tight fit actually. So that should push through there. And then once it's out, it should then release the cable. There we are, we're getting there. Right. There we go, little clip. And now we can get the cable out. We can slide that spring off. We've got that, that's the really big spring which goes that way around, so we'll stick him on the vise. There we go. And that's the old electromagnet. So, for a bit of fun, let's stick a battery on it and see if it still works. See if we can make it into a magnet again. Hoo! You can tell I'm not in a rush to get this trailer fixed, that can't you? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I do like to mess around a bit. So this is the old electromagnet, and just for interest, just for the record, it's been making contact with the drum for quite a while. There's some pretty significant burrs on the edge of this magnet where it's been basically, you know, chewing its way against the drum. And if we look on the inside of the drum, which is extremely heavy. You can see in here where it's been rubbing big time. That's not good at all, is it? I don't think that's normal. Okay, so first of all, let's just check what the uh, what the resistance value is. It says here three amps, twelve volts on there, made by a company called TEK Tech. It's a zero five one five, and it's a WABS, whatever that means no idea right so resistance can you see the meter i think you can maybe hang on just bear with me because you've got to see the meter yes you can see the meter there can't you okay right resistance value coming up I'll just put i'll put some little eyelets on the end so we'll go pretty much onto the eyelets 
2.6 ohms. Okay, so I'll make a note of that. This is the old one. Old. 2.6 ohms. Okay, we could also check, just for fun, the current. So we can stick that in there. Stick him on 10. Hopefully you can see that. About the same kind of angle, wasn't it? Okay, and we'll chuck, there's wires everywhere, isn't there? That's a bit of a tidy up. We'll chuck one wire, battery positive. It doesn't matter where you put the ammeter, as long as it's in circuit. So we'll hold that on there, hold that on there. Oh, it's quite a bit log. Obviously dropping, but it's about four and a half ohms it started off at. Didn't, uh, sorry, four and a half amps is what it initially started off at. So 4.5 amps initial. Interesting stuff. And of course, let's now make it into an electromagnet. So we'll get rid of the multimeter. We don't need that at the moment. So I'll plug that onto there. It's just on the battery now. <laughs> And it's now so interestingly enough that way round thing, it has no magnetic field whatsoever turn it round this is the face that faces the drum it's not over strong but it's all right you know it's surprising how little force it needs to work Wow. Okay. Interesting. I'm pretty sure it shouldn't make contact with the drum. That would be bad. The guy said it shouldn't. I don't think it should. It looks pretty, pretty damaged as that, to be fair. Anyway, let's have a look at the new parts and then we can do the same uh, experiment on the new one. I think this bit will be a bit easier freehand. So we've got the two brand new magnets. They look exactly the same. Uh, I'm just conscious actually that there's the metal on the outside. It's not all the way around. There's an area here that hasn't got any metal. So we need to be conscious we get it the right way around when we refit it. That should be easy. I bought some new wheel bearings because, well, they weren't very good. The rest of them are, oh, they're in that bag. They weren't that bad. But we're in anyway, so why not replace them? It's got a long way to go, this trailer. And we've got the new brake shoes, which are slightly different. We'll take a look at the difference a bit later on. But the part number for the brake shoes is there, look. Viking brake shoes. They sell them in one pair. Very strange. Normally, you get them, you know, for automotive, you get all four in one box. Probably another way of making some more money, really. Uh, wheel bearing kits. This is made by, where is it now? There, look. Again, Viking trailers, parts and equipment. And that's the part number. Hang on, this one's a bit easy to read. TWK09. Probably meaningless to you because it's specific to this trailer. And these electro brake thingamajigs, again, all Viking trailer parts. They weren't that expensive, to be fair, for what they are. And that's the part number for those. Mag magnet to suit electric brake, drum brake. Electric drum brake. Hmm. Quite surprising that there's just one option. You know? He said, yep, yeah, we've got some of those. So I thought, cool, that'll work. Right, let's take a look at how much they cost. So I always find this little bit this bit a little bit interesting because prices can vary a lot from around the world. So this, you know, if you're doing your trailer, then um, you know, you might say, hey Andy, you got those cheap. Oh boy, they were expensive for New Zealand, which is normally the case. Um, so the brake shoe kits, so that's two shoes, one pair, not an axle, just one side. Uh, they were $109.79 plus tax. Tax is 15%. Uh, so you'll have to add that on because I've only got a total here. I'll give you the total. Uh, now the magnets, bear with me. So, the magnet, one magnet, was... I thought this was actually quite cheap, but hey, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, 
$43.81. It looks like it's given us a little bit of discount on those. Cheers, mate. Uh, now, I did keep the guy's name, actually. Where is it? Hang on. Yes, very, very helpful chap. So if you happen to be in New Zealand, uh, and uh, the company is TWL, they're not a sponsor of the channel. They didn't even know I was making a video on this until I was just about to leave. So it didn't affect any of the pricing or how they helped me. And that's how I like to do it. Uh, his name is Jason. He's based at the Hamilton or Tron dealership, as the locals call it. And his number is 021-195-7033. He put it on the card. He's happy. It's obviously a business number. He's happy for that to go out to the world. So there you go. Um, right. So magnets, pretty cheap at $43.81 plus tax each. Uh, oh, I did get a, 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 in fact, we'll stick with the brakes for now. So we've got, we also got the, uh, the wheel bearing kits. Doesn't feel very heavy for bearings and stuff. I hope they're all in there. Um, now that was $69. 35 normal he did it for $55.48 a kit plus tax so that wasn't too bad for a couple of bearings and a seal and a seal retainer and hopefully a split pin who knows um and we've got one other thing hang on now completely unrelated to the brake job but i thought i'd mention it anyway this is a company called britax or brightax if you pronounce it wrong or right I, don't know, I call it Britex but anyway uh, this is the electrical plug that goes on the wiring to the towing vehicle it plugs into the socket on the vehicle and this one you probably see on the back actually is the multi um, type plug where you've got the standard seven pins for all the wiring you know for the lights and that kind of thing and then you've got another four pins for other stuff like running fridges and stuff like on caravans. I find these plugs to be a lot better than the, just the seven pin ones which normally fall out and fall apart. They're actually really well made. Uh, part number is B47. There you go, look. And it's 12 pin flat plastic trailer plug B47. Made by Brightex. Uh, it says here made in Taiwan. Um, and for Garrett Street, Brindale, Queensland, Australia. Right. Well, I remember Britax, when I lived in England, were based in Bridlington, from memory, at the time. This is going back a long time. Uh, it's also got another part number on there, TP12F, actually moulded into the plastic. So that's a bit weird. Well, they've got two different part numbers. But anyway, that's a different job. It won't be a video. It's pretty easy to do. There's already a video on the channel on how to wire up a trailer plug anyway. So I don't need to show you that one again. Um, so yeah, that cost for that plug uh, retails $57.17. Pretty steep. Discounted down to $51.45 plus tax. So the total cost of all these parts, $500 and forty dollars and five cents including that 15 percent tax Pretty expensive really but needs to be done there's also a wiring fault with the lights and i've got a bracket to repair on a there's a fold down ramp at the back for loading bikes and stuff in it one of the one of the hinges is broken so i've either got to try and do a repair on that it's made out of, of aluminium unfortunately so i can't weld it I'm not set up for welding alley uh, I might be able to come up with a, another a cunning plan to repair it, um, or I'll just make a new um, half of the hinge out of steel, because I can weld that. So it'll get fixed, and it has to be fixed by Monday morning, so I've got the rest of today and tomorrow after the live stream. Jeez. Okay, let's grab the new magnet and put it through its paces and see if it's any different to the one that we took out, other than the fact it's not been scraped to hell against the drum thanks jason appreciate your help matey i don't know where that's going to go somewhere in the workshop right let's have a look at what we've got ah we do get a new clip excellent and a very a new weak spring okay that's rubbish that's the clip we'll stick it on the vice don't want to lose that okay and that's the spring great packing lads Oh, great spring. Jeez. <laughs> it might quite have some plastic on it. A 
Okay, nobody, Andy, wants to watch you take plastic off a spring. I know, I know. We'll tidy that up later on. Right, so stick him over there. Okay, the magnet. What have we got? Um, made by Alco. So, a different brand for sure. Well, it goes that way around. It's going to match. Wiring comes out the same end. Looks similar. The, the holes here that are drilled into the aluminium are a different size. They're larger. The fitting's the same. Looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Looks almost identical. Slightly different moulding on the on the end piece as well. Okay. So what have we got? Okay, we've got a nice long wire, that's for sure. Okay. So first of all, we can check. Obviously, we haven't got the crocodile clips on this one, and it's not going to get them because it's going to go on the trailer. So let's get the old multimeter out. Put him on ohms, 200, hopefully you can see that, fingers crossed, and I'll just hold that across the two wires like that. Huh? Check your wires, oh hang on, wrong one. Ooh, that makes, jeez, I thought we had a faulty one then. Right, that one, and that one. Dum dum, 3.6, not 2.6, 3.5. That's different. Okay, so the new one is 3.5 ohms. Okay. Now, current draw. I'm going to run out of fingers here, I think. I'll give it a go. So we'll flick him across onto amps. We'll stick that on amps. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, now then, can I just trap that in there? That would help enormously. Uh, hang on, I know what we can do. We can use the crocodile clip of one of the other ones. Off the old one. There we go. Right. Okay, so that needs to go on there. That needs to go on battery positive. There we go. Right, we have got a bad contact. Right, about 3.45 amps. So definitely less amps. And more resistance, so that stands to reason. So about 3.45 amps. So, we have just proved without any doubt whatsoever in our roundabout way that the new magnet this one uh, compared to the old magnet is not as powerful it isn't it's not going to work as well the brakes are not going to be as harsh but I was sold it as a direct replacement to this one. So it's going to go in. There's no question about that. It has to go in. But rather annoying. So when you're buying these, make sure if you're replacing one, measure the ohms. And then you can take your multimeter with you into the shop. And you can measure the ohms of the replacement one. And it should be the same. This one isn't. This is more higher resistance. And therefore less powerful. Less current flow. Bugger. Oh, we are going to get there, I promise you. <laughs> I've been leading you on so much on this video. Uh, right, I'm going to clean off the backing plate because I need to clean all the areas where the shoes and other components make contact with that backing plate so we can apply a little bit of lubricants. I'm not going to use copper paste. I'm going to use a Forge product, which is an aluminium-based paste. I find that really, really good. doesn't go quite so gloopy as the old copper paste stuff does. Uh, but you'll see me doing that in the video. Uh, so it's time for a cigarette, a coffee, and a wire brush. And uh, well, here's a note from Tall Girl Holly. See you shortly. Hey! While Andy's doing that, check out my Instagram page, Tall Girl Holly.
It'll be like new when it's all done. That's been a mess, isn't it? Hmm, I've learnt something while I was having my coffee. I was looking about these electric brakes because it was concerning me how the magnets being pulled around by the rotating drum actually worked. I was under the impression it was just the magnetic field, you know, being attracted to the drum pulling it. But I'm thinking, well, is that actually going to create much force? And I was looking at a website called eTrailer.com. And the question this gentleman poses, uh, Dan R. He says, the brakes work great on my trailer, but the springs for the magnets hold them against the inside of the drum slightly, just enough so I can hear it, even when the brakes are not applied. Is this normal or should there be an air gap? So I was thinking... <sighs> Okay, so maybe the air gap's only there when the brakes are not activated. And maybe the magnet actually should make contact with the drum physically um, when the brakes, when the, when the magnet's actually energized when you press the brake pedal. So I had a little read down. And it says here, by an expert, uh, the magnet should only make contact with the inside of the brake drum when power is applied to the magnet. If it's making contact with the drum all the time, you may have a residual power running into the brake wire that is just enough to cause the magnet to grab the drum. That's a different fault, but yes, it's quite correct. Um, it says here, you may also want, to pull, you also, also want to pull the hub to take the brake drum off and check for any grooves cut into the drum surface. Um, and, and wear on the magnet. Well, we've got quite a lot of wear on the magnet. Uh, if the magnet is worn, it will need to be replaced. I mean, it's going to get worn, isn't it, if it's making contact with the drum where every time you press the brake pedal. So it, that obviously it's a consumable part, and maybe that's why it's so cheap. Uh, if you see or feel grooves on the inside of the drum, it will also need to be replaced. Ooh, we better recheck our drum, I think. Um, and that's about it. So thank you, expert Michael H. Really appreciate that. So you've taught me something. So, yes. When the brakes are activated, the, the electromagnet does make contact with the brake drum. That would explain it. So it's not actually a fault. It's what should happen. So my explanation that I did as we were stripping the, the, the brake down was a little bit incorrect on how the magnet actually operates. It's still everything to do with the arm moving and, and, and activating the brake shoes and stuff. All that's still fine. But yes, the, the electromagnet does make contact with the rotating brake drum when the brakes are on. Who would have guessed? Anyway, right, we will move on. Uh, you've seen, I've, I've cleaned up the brake, the, the brake backing plate, and now we can reassemble. Here we go. Now, this aluminium paste is the Forch S, sorry, S424. It's brilliant for brakes, really, really good. Okay, so first of all, we need to refit this arm. The arm that I didn't actually clean off beforehand so I'll just get rid of the, the bulk of the crap there we go that'll do doesn't have to be super clean and that's going to pivot on there so we need a little bit of copper paste not copper paste aluminium paste on that pivot now as with all brakes this kind of stuff is less is more we don't want heaps on there because it could end up on the brake shoes which is bad that will do just fine and it also makes contact down here so we're going to put a little bit not a lot that's way too much a little bit on there I'll just wipe the rest of it off in a second there we go and that will allow that to slide on there nice and easily that's the plan and it also makes contact here so we'll put a bit on there as well there we go lovely jubbly okay now it's time to install the magnet the new one now this is the right hand side so the drum rotates in this direction and we put an arrow on there so it goes that way so this 
these to go on there. First of all, the new spring. Stick him on there. And then the magnet goes on like that. And then we just have that little clip to fit. That's all that holds it in place. And there is a little recess, a little hole. Hang on, I'll show you. Just in there, look. Probably not in foot. In fact, I might just put a little bit more on that. Just inside the actual pivot itself. Ooh, that's way too much. There we go. Okay, because that's quite an important part of this. Where's my rag? I don't like having too much. Because all it does is migrate everywhere. There we go, that's a lot better. Okay, so, new spring. And the magnet goes on that way with the wire facing forwards on the trailer. And then we've got the little clip to put on. So please don't lose the clip, Andy. There we go. Wow. That's it. Pretty wobbly, isn't it? But yes, as long as it's got clearance from the drum, and I will check that when I refit it, we should be good. Now, the wire comes round here, and it zip ties to there, and to there, and I was going to drill a hole in there, wasn't I? So, where's my pen? Okay. So I think we should put a hole, hate to modify brakes, but we need to stop the problem. So I will drill a small hole just there for an extra zip tie. Right, back shortly. Okay, we're all done, so make sure I've got all this silver stuff off my gloves because it's gonna end up everywhere otherwise. Okay, hole is drilled, thanks for reminding me. Sticking back on there, look. And now we can route that cable round, put some cable ties on. Dum 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 dum. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. I like to make things better if I can. What is bothering me a little bit is that these magnets are not quite as strong as the original ones, but. I think with all the additional lube and stuff and the ease of movement of the shoes now, it should more than compensate for that. And if they weren't strong enough, they wouldn't sell them, right? That's the idea. Now, drilling that hole hasn't really caused any structural weakness to this arm. It's pretty beefy stuff, to be honest. I think we'll be just fine. And it's a much smaller hole than the original slots that are in there. Cable ties and gloves just don't go together, do they? Right, let's get me snippers. Okay, one, two, three. Perfect. Okay, now the next job was to run that wire through there and it's even different sheathing isn't it but it doesn't matter it'll work and then we have this little contraption where you thread the wire through and then push it in the hole and it clamps the wire at the same time pretty clever so how are we going to do this that whole thing falling apart i don't know and we'll give it a go see if we can mount it in the vice a bit like that for now that should work he says you see it falling off let me know there we go just gingerly in the vise get the little clip right thread the clip through thread the wires through the clip boom 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 one two okay oh hang on don't need to thread it through right hang on then I'll just pop it in there Stick that over there, thread it down. Oh, 
and it's they're quite hard to get in because you're crushing the wires at the same time but with a bit of perseverance and no swear words whatsoever do i have a little flat screwdriver yeah i'll do there we go right he's in that works brilliant that's pretty good about as neat as we can get it right so stick it back in there same orientation so you're not getting confused okay right that is done next job really is the new brake shoes but God, I've got, see silver stuff everywhere look it's good stuff but man it's gonna have my great okay uh, the brake shoes make contact with the oh, still some more with the backing plate he, I'll mark them, look. Here, 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 and here. How's that for TV? Okay, so now we can put some copper, some aluminium paste, not a lot, on those surfaces. And this wasn't done before, and that's bad. You want these brakes? Yeah, this is all part of servicing brakes. Drum brakes. There we go. Right, new shoes. Okay, we have to be very conscious about the fact that the short shoe goes uh, on this side. It says short shoe, it's the actual friction material that's short. And the, sh the short area is around there. So, just checking for some more aluminium paste because it's absolutely critical we don't get that on the friction material. That would be very bad. Very bad indeed. So that's going to go on there like that. Now, first of all, we have a contact point up here. So we need a bit of uh, aluminium paste on there as well like that again not need a lot but you do want a bit okay I think we're doing okay sort of right we can do the same with the other shoe this is the one with the the full length friction material there we go and that goes on there like that okay I've spotted a problem I have spotted a problem straight away that we didn't notice here is the slot for the handbrake mechanism remember that goes in there like that and the same on the other side it doesn't have those slots so we can't fit the handbrake mechanism that's okay because this trailer doesn't have a handbrake but it is somewhat annoying the good news is I have a spare part now which I can use for something else. Great, we did make a mistake matching up the shoes. And to be fair, if we had to reorder the correct shoes, then they were coming from the South Island and they probably wouldn't have got here in time. So this is gonna make the installation a lot simpler. Sorry, can't show you the fitment of the handbrake mechanism, but you did see it on the previous, uh, early in the video. Now, next job is to fit Jeez, I've forgotten already. The large spring. That's also that one there is also part of the handbrake, so we don't need that anymore. And this one went across there like that. So this actually should be a lot more simple. Wow, that's different as well. Look. You see the slot there is a lot bigger. This one. They line up, at least they line up. Right, okay. So that's got to go in there, and that has to go under there like that, but it's too long now to fit. Oh my word, honestly. So what do we do? Trim the spring down? I mean, if we trim the spring down, it's not going to... 
that's not right, is it? Oh no. Do we make a slot? Do we have to slot it ourselves? Is it in the right place, that hole? I think it is, actually. So, this is going to be great fun. Let me get a pen. You know, I was sort of just taking this nice and steady today, and now all of a sudden we've now got a bit more work to do. So I need to make that slot more like that. Now you won't need to do this because you'll have got the right shoes. God damn it. I think at this end, we can probably get that spring in. So I'm just going to take that shoe back off. And uh, can we? Do I need to do the same on that side? Probably do a little bit, actually. Oh, we've got aluminium paste in my fingers. Hey, it's an adventure. That's what it's all about. So, on this particular shoe as well, we also need to do a similar thing. Not quite so aggressive, though. Something like that. Okay, let me get the Dremel out, and um, I'll, I'm going to do the minimum I need to do, but let me get it sorted out, and then we can carry on. Well, if you're going to do things properly, <laughs> try and make do, I thought, look, let's, uh, let's get the old shoe. We've got a template. I've cut off the steel backing plate and got rid of the old friction material. So this is the point of no return. This is the, the right-hand one. I'm going to offer it up near as damn it. Get everything sort of lined up. It will go a bit higher. There we go. Right. That looks pretty good. And it's only a clearance hole for the spring. So what we'll do is we'll just sort of screw around there. Now something I also noticed is the location for the two pins with these springs is slightly different on the new shoe. So I'm gonna mark that as well. And then maybe we'll just drill a hole in the right place. Because it only needs to be a hole, it doesn't need to be a slot. I don't think, or does it? Nah, just a hole. It's only a hole on the old Suzuki Jeeps. Uh, and other than that, I mean, we could go the whole hog. We could be, hey, let's make the handbrake mechanism work as well. And we could, score out that notch and I could drill it and I could cut it and get rid of this lot but end of the day it doesn't have a handbrake it's pointless so we're not going to bother with that but that was a really accurate way of working out exactly what we need to remove the material here to uh, to get that spring to work properly and I'll do that on both sides well you know when needs must because that trailer's going out on Monday morning come hell or high water I think I've come up with a cutting plan. There we go. To the pillar drill! Shum! Trying to come up with a cunning plan and doing it with a Dremel was going to take bloody ages. So I thought, well, you know what? That's going to work. All we have to do is get the spring in there, right? Hoo -hoo, we're cooking on gas now. Neat little trick. If you have to drill a hole into something that there isn't, you know, there's a bit already missing, use a guide. Bit of old scrap steel, little circular thing out of six mil plates, drill the hole. 
and then just locate it where you want it to do, clamp it in place, and boom, away you go. It works a treat. And if you have to do modifications to brake shoes like this, keep the heat down, that's critical. Um, I mean, obviously they get hot when they're in use, so the, the bonding of the friction material should be able to cope with a bit of heat anyway. Um, but to cut the old inner sort of web off the old brake shoe and use that as a template, pretty smart really, if I may say so. Um, okay, let's see if this thing will go back together now. Hoo -hoo! Right, let's rock. So we can stick that one in, he's a bit more on there, I'll stick it on the pivot down there as well actually, because you know that's a main pivot now. Bit of a shame about the old handbrake mechanism, but in all honesty it makes absolutely no difference because it doesn't have one. Surplus to requirements and it just adds more bits that can break and fall off inside the drum, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now we'll feed him through the hole, the new hole that we drilled, which is in perfect alignment. We'll pop down the little springy thing. Now I find it easier to push the springy thing down and hold it stationary and then turn the pin. 90 degrees, there we go, look. Always grabs your glove, it's great for that. Okay, and now we can put this in. We've still got a little clip, uh, come back, which was on there holding the wire. So we're gonna refit that later on over the wire. That needs to go in there and go across. Now don't forget, brake shoe with the short length of friction material to the right. Remember the little line we put on there? And now we can offer that in to the slot that we cut, the little hole, made it a bit bigger, that drops into there. Then we can line that up with the pivot at the top and bring that in there like that. Okay, now the next job is to get the other spring clip in. And there's a little trick for that. If I grab one of my clamps, my woodworking clamps, stick that on there, that's gonna hold it in position for us so we're not fighting all the springs. Pop that up there, and you could do that on the vehicle as well, you know, it doesn't have to be working remote. And then we can pop that on now. I always struggle with this side a bit more on the left side to be fair, I don't know why, it's probably just psychological, if that's a word. Right, are we there? Nearly there. We're there. Right, that's on, we can release that. Perfect, how easy was that, you see? No fighting, no swearing. Okay, now this spring goes underneath on this side and over the top on this side, on this particular design. And you know, there are lots of different designs out there, so you've gotta be, you gotta take notes, people. Right, that's in. Lastly, I've just put a bit of, of the aluminium paste on the threads. It's quite a loose fit on the tube, so I'm not gonna bother putting it down there, because all it does is attract dust as well, so you gotta be conscious of that. And there's a little cutout at the end where these connect to the brake shoes, and it's the slopey bit downwards towards the radius of the shoe. This, bit, this bit's a bit fiddly, but it's, it's not too bad. The spring isn't over strong. So we will hook him in there first, and then we'll pull that out. Ugh, time to go to the gym. There we go, and he's in. And the spring across the top, it rubs on that little wheel to stop it rotating freely. That's your adjustment to bring the shoes out towards the drum. Okay, so the bits that we haven't fitted, just to recap, is the handbrake mechanism. This trailer doesn't have a handbrake, it doesn't need these parts, uh, and they would have gone somewhere like that, poking out the back of the drum. Uh, we also don't need the spring. So we've got some spare parts, which is always very useful. All this looks pretty good. I don't think that that spring can come out. Yeah, I think we're good to go, other than that little tiny clip that we need to fit. So, pliers required for that. Where's my pliers gone? There they are. So we'll just bend that open slightly. We've only need more than one pair of pliers, hang on.
There we go. I'll just bend that open slightly. Perfect. That should do the trick. And it needs the wire needs to go through it as does that spring. We'll just flip it round. And then I need to just close it up again. There we go. Bit more. It's done. And that's all it was. It was just there to sort of hold that wire and stop it getting in the way. Well, I'm very happy with that. The wiring is much better tucked out of the way now. It's not going to rub on the on the drum, on the center of the drum. So, quick check. So, drum rotates in this direction. This will get pulled that way. When it's energized, it'll be pulled out and make contact with the drum and get dragged in that direction. Which, I'll put an arrow on it. How's that? Look? It'll get dragged in that direction. And what we should see is this brake shoe being pulled outwards, hopefully. Yeah, there we go, look. Easy peasy. So that one goes out that way, and then the, as that gets pulled down, and it hits the, the side of the drum, can't go any further, and that's when it pushes across this way, and that shoe gets pushed out in that direction. Pretty good, really. I don't know if I can, can, I, can, I, if I can actually show that. Maybe I could. There's some mole grips. Maybe if we put something on here, which is going to stop it from moving. My gloves are falling apart. Right, let's try that. Yeah, there you go. Look, you see? See how this, this one now is going that way? So I'm going down in that direction as the magnet gets pulled around. And then this one's getting pulled across. Pretty cool, really, isn't it? We could, I could put some aluminium paste on these two contact points here, actually. I think I'll do that. That shouldn't be too hard to get in there. And that one. Excellent. Well, I reckon that's done. Very happy with that. All I have to do now is fit it back on the vehicle. So that's about it. It's been a bit of a weird afternoon, well, morning and afternoon to be fair. It's taken a lot longer than planned, but I think it's turned out to be quite a good video on electric brakes for trailers. All I need to do now is remove that little bracket that I made to mount it in the vise, bolt it onto the trailer axle, connect the two wires up, which I'll put some little terminals on there. They were soldered. I'll just crimp some terminals on and um, fit the new bearings to the drum. There is a video already on the channel I'll put a link to there for you in the description and I'll put your little flag thing on the screen at some point probably about now Andy that should be good uh, doing wheel bearings on a trailer basically um, so that brings us to the end of the video thank you very much for watching and putting putting up with me and we did it all from our workshop uh, didn't have to go outside at all which is perfect um, why not click on the subscribe button ring the bell and then uh, YouTube will send you a notification as and when I upload any new videos you'll also find me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter feel free to communicate through any of those portals you can also email me Andy mechanic at live.co.uk that's L I V E It's in the description and uh, I'll try and get back to you I can't always guarantee it I'm pretty busy chap now, if you'd like to support the channel, this is where it comes to the crunch, isn't it? You know, we all hate talking about this, but lots of people find these videos super helpful and some of them actually do help to keep the channel going. So if you'd like to be one of those people, why not um, go to Patreon, become a patron to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. You can set up a, a small monthly payment through that. Or if you like, you can jump onto PayPal uh, use the same email address, andymechanic at live, L-I-V-E dot co dot U-K, and send a few bucks this way. Be very grateful. Okay, crew, until next time, see you around. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh! Ha, ha, ha.